MTV has been the home of tons of memorable shows across multiple generations. From watching Exhibit put a satellite dish on top of a car and pimp my ride, seriously, that actually happened. People on my timeline talking about it's fucked up what you did to that car. MTV has a wide array of programs, some entertaining and some pretty dang stupid. But my favorite show in MTV's long, long history is Beavis and Butthead. Beavis and Butthead debuted as a short film for Liquid Television, which was an animated showcase on MTV in the early 90s. MTV quickly saw the potential of the characters and greenlit a spin-off Beavis and Butthead series that ran from 1993 to 1997. The show was about two dunderheads with low intelligence, poor social skills, and a real lack of motivation to do anything other than watch TV and laugh all day. A direct reflection of the average teenage American of the 90s, a generation sometimes referred to as the slacker generation. Beavis and Butthead spent almost all their time sitting in front of a TV watching music videos on MTV and making fun of the music videos. The way they talked and their lack of caring about anything struck a chord with an entire generation. I like Beavis and Butthead because they're nasty. They express the way we feel, kind of. It didn't feel like the perfect fantasy world of perfect fantasy TV characters anymore, and a long way away from the crest white smiles of the characters of shows like Full House and Saved by the Bell. The amount of dangerous stunts these characters have performed on each other is endless. Launching Beavis off a treadmill, Butthead putting a paper bag on Beavis's head to stop a nosebleed, Beavis's finger getting cut off, and a lot of fire. Like, a lot. Most notably an episode where Beavis and Butthead attempt stand-up comedy and fail, so Beavis decides to juggle burning newspapers instead, which leads to the comedy club being burned down. Nothing out of the ordinary for a Beavis and Butthead episode, but a month later, the episode became a much bigger deal than anyone expected. I'm Connie Deegan. Our top story tonight about a cable cartoon show that's getting an awful lot of laughs. But Beavis and Butthead are no laughing matter to many people. Last week, this Ohio blaze left two-year-old Jessica Matthews dead. The fire was started by her five-year-old brother, whom the mother says is a Beavis and Butthead fan. The mother blamed the tragedy on the influence of MTV's two animated bad boys. Beavis and Butthead, who've actually become societal icons on the air, and in virtually every episode, they commit major felonies. When I was a little kid, I used to watch Leave it to Beaver and My Three Sons and Ozzie and Harriet, and they did teach me good values, and you wonder, you wonder what kids are learning from this stuff. When you've got a five-year-old kid that sets a fire after he's watched a show uh, where the actors in it said, uh, fire is fun, and they like to play with fire, uh, this is not good, uh, reasonable broadcasting. This is just foolishness. It was reported that a five-year-old boy watched the episode and tried to recreate the scene, but ended up burning down the house and unfortunately losing his two-year-old sister in the fire. The mom blamed Beavis and Butthead for the incident, and it began an absolute hellstorm of Beavis and Butthead criticism in the media. Every news anchor, talk show host, and quote-unquote expert in the country had something to say about Beavis and Butthead. With the general consensus among most of them being that it was irresponsible for MTV to air such an explicit show so early in the evening when kids were still watching TV. It seems that in the 90s, parents started facing the harsh reality that they can't control everything their kids do or see. And they took action by targeting shows that scared them instead of just doing a better job of making sure their kids weren't watching said shows. This was huge with The Simpsons earlier in the decade, and Beavis and Butthead soon replaced The Simpsons as the cartoon that parents and media decided to join forces and blame everything bad to ever happen on. It was far and away the most controversial show on television, and on top of all that, it was often accused of dumbing down the American youth due to silly, mindless comedy in the show. MTV responded to the controversy by removing every single scene in the show that involved fire. Mike Judge also comedically responded to the ridiculousness of the hysteria in an episode where Beavis and Butthead flew a kite into a lightning storm and blamed Benjamin Franklin's bad influence for their actions. <laughs> so the reception to the show was divided at the time, with many people calling it trash and an example of the decay of American culture. But others like David Letterman recognized Beavis and Butthead for what it was, a superb satire of modern America and the culture it was producing. And like I said, the teenage and young adults of America were overjoyed to see themselves represented more accurately for once, something that had only really been done with Bart Simpson up until that point. Mike Judge went on to create King of the Hill. King of the Hill's main character was Hank Hill, and an early version of Hank Hill was a recurring character on Beavis and Butthead.
character from Beavis and Butthead was their classmate Daria, who went on to have her own spin-off. Mike Judge wasn't involved in the spin-off, but it ended up being one of MTV's most influential and iconic anime. South Park creators Matt Stone and Trey Parker have openly stated that Beavis and Butthead was a massive influence on them in their show. Justin Roiland, the co-creator of Rick and Morty, is also on record saying Beavis and Butthead was a huge influence on him in the industry, along with South Park. But now Beavis and Butthead is coming back, again. Comedy Central has announced two seasons of Beavis and Butthead are in production, so it'll be interesting to see how it works out this time. Do you think Beavis and Butthead was at all responsible for any of the trouble that was supposedly influenced by the show? Sound off in the comments, and be sure to like this video and subscribe to Toon Fridge for more cartoon content. Thanks for watching. Hello, person of YouTube. Uh, my name is D, and I make videos about cartoons. Uh, I genuinely love making videos, and I genuinely love cartoons, so I put a lot of time and effort into making videos about cartoons. So I hope you enjoy. I, I hope you enjoy these videos as much as I enjoy waffles. And if you're not subscribed, it would mean the world to me if you subscribed and turned on those notifications. And if you are subscribed, thank you. I'm grateful for you. And I hope you drink a lot of water today. Thank you.